the digital euro is on the move. Yesterday, the Governing Council of the ECB approved the opening of the preparation phase. It will be a journey and we will walk the journey together with the legislator. All European institutions will be involved to make sure that Europe is equipped with the currency of the future. Cash is here to stay. You will have all options, cash and digital cash. So what does it mean for you? For consumers, it would be free and easy to use everywhere in the euro area. All of that, of course, is subject to the legislative process. Cash or digital, the choice will be yours. Your euro, your choice. It's fascinating to see how different countries explore various CBDC models, each with strengths and considerations. From direct account-based systems to partnerships with commercial banks, and even experiments with anonymous tokens, these models showcase the versatility and adaptability of CBDCs to meet different needs and objectives. Keep watching till the end of this video to see why CBDC is better than cryptocurrency. One crucial distinction between CBDCs and cryptocurrencies lies in their control and governance. Central banks or governments issue and regulate CBDCs ensuring compliance with existing financial regulations. This centralized control allows for stability and enables central banks to implement monetary policies effectively. However, cryptocurrencies operate on decentralized blockchain networks and are created via mining. No single entity or institution controls cryptocurrencies, and this decentralized nature of cryptocurrency is often regarded by many as the key advantage of cryptocurrencies over traditional finance. Another significant difference between CBDC and crypto lies in the underlying technology used. CBDCs may employ a variety of technological frameworks, but they are often built on centralized databases or distributed ledger technologies. These DLTs can be permissioned, meaning access is restricted to authorized participants such as central banks, commercial banks, or financial institutions. On the other hand, cryptocurrencies primarily rely on public and permissionless blockchains. They are open to anyone who wants to participate and verify transactions, and they operate on a consensus mechanism like proof of work or proof of stake. In each consensus mechanism, participants compete to solve complex mathematical problems or lock their cryptocurrency to support the security and operation of the network. The next difference we should consider is the transactional privacy and confidentiality aspects. CBDCs regulated by central banks or governments typically incorporate measures to balance privacy and regulatory compliance. While transaction records are stored on the blockchain or digital ledger, access to certain details may be limited to authorized entities, preserving individual privacy rights. In contrast, cryptocurrencies generally prioritize anonymity and pseudonymity. Transactions on public blockchains are transparent and visible to all participants, but the identities of the individuals behind these transactions are often masked or represented by pseudonyms. This aspect of cryptocurrencies has raised concerns about illicit activities, such as money laundering and transactions. Lastly, the purpose and use cases of CBDCs and cryptocurrencies. CBDCs aim to enhance the efficiency and security of traditional financial systems while maintaining regulatory oversight. Unlike CBDC, a blend of traditional finance and digital assets, cryptocurrencies emerged as an alternative to traditional financial systems. CBDCs and cryptocurrencies differ in control, governance, underlying technology, transactional privacy, and purpose. CBDCs provide a digital form of traditional currency regulated by central banks or governments, while cryptocurrencies operate independently on decentralized blockchain networks emphasizing transparency and decentralization. Different countries are piloting various approaches, each with its own unique features. Let's start with an account-based model, like Dcash, implemented in the Eastern Caribbean. With Dcash, individuals can operate deposit accounts directly with the central bank. This model directly links consumers and the central bank, offering a secure and efficient way to transact with digital currency. On the other end of the spectrum, we have China's ECNY, a CBDC pilot that relies on private sector banks to distribute and maintain digital currency accounts for their customers. This model demonstrates a partnership between the central and commercial banks, 
leveraging their existing infrastructure and customer base to facilitate CBDC adoption. In addition, let's focus on the European Central Bank's approach. They are considering a model where licensed financial institutions would operate permission nodes of the blockchain network. This would serve as a conduit for the distribution of a digital euro. This collaborative model allows established financial institutions to play a crucial role in the issuance and distribution of the CBDC, leveraging their expertise while ensuring regulatory compliance. Finally, we have a model that may excite the crypto files among us. This model involves issuing fiat currency, which is a government-issued currency not backed by a commodity, as anonymous fungible tokens. This aims to protect users' privacy and maintain the benefits of a digital currency system. The European Central Bank has spent the last two years researching how a digital euro might function, and now they are preparing for its deployment. The European Central Bank revealed that this preparation phase is expected to last two years beginning on November 1st. The European Central Bank argues that the existing bank financial models will not be altered significantly. However, others foresee impending difficulties. One research suggests that financial institutions' profits might fall by up to 20%. According to Andrea Filtry, who works with Mediobanca Research, the effect that the blow to fees would have will be severe. The technology that underpins the digital euro would free European payments from the expensive chaos of national systems that they are now subject to. The result of this would be cost savings on payments. The switchover of almost half of all debit payments and bank transfers would result in a loss of profitability for EU banks of around 3%. In addition, payments from the CBDC would pull deposits out of the banking system. The maximum balance that may be held in a CBDC account might be capped at about €3,000 if central bankers have their way. Despite this, complete absorption would still result in substantial discomfort. The introduction of the digital euro can potentially remove deposits totaling around 1 trillion euro from the European financial system, equivalent to 10% of retail deposits. Banks may be required to use their extra reserves to cover any shortfalls. This worst-case scenario would result in a net interest revenue loss and reduce a bank's profitability by an additional 9%. It would be necessary for banks to develop novel strategies to make use of technological advancements to achieve expansion. On the other hand, the adoption of a digital ledger by CBDC is anticipated to pave the way for other sources of revenue, such as the creation of smart contracts for various financial products. There is, without a doubt, an opposing viewpoint or argument. Higher interest rates on money held over shorter periods might help banks stem the loss of deposit customers. In addition, one should never be so naive as to underestimate the sluggishness of bank clients. Inertia is the key factor that allows high street banks to maintain their dominating positions. Now that the danger posed by cryptocurrencies to fiat currency has diminished, these people will expect that CBDCs will be stopped by the government's lack of movement. CBDC is the digital form of a country's fiat issued by the central bank and has the same value as the country's fiat currency. They are similar to cryptocurrencies except they are created and regulated by central banks, the institutions responsible for overseeing a nation's financial services, setting monetary policies, and issuing traditional currency. But CBDCs exist solely electronically instead of printing physical banknotes, just like cryptocurrencies. There are several reasons behind this global trend of creating CBDCs. One major advantage is financial inclusion. By going digital, CBDCs have the potential to provide access to banking services for unbanked populations, allowing them to participate in the formal economy. Another major advantage of CBDCs is the potential for reduced costs. It triggers a shift from physical infrastructure to digital finance. It is estimated that with the advent of CBDCs, financial service providers could save a staggering $400 billion annually in direct costs. However, one must understand that implementing CBDCs will require significant investments in new technology. Hence, the cost savings must be measured against the investments needed to implement CBDC successfully. Notably, the long-term benefits could outweigh the initial expenses. The potential for increased speed and efficiency in electronic payment systems is another thing every country can benefit from. CBDCs are expected to enhance the speed and efficiency of transactions. Interestingly, this could make payments faster and more convenient. 
However, it's worth mentioning that advancements in existing electronic payment systems may reduce the comparative advantage of CBDCs in terms of speed over time. The potential to increase financial inclusion is one of the most compelling reasons nations are falling heels for implementing CBDCs. It provides a means of banking the unbanked. Unsurprisingly, about 1.6 billion individuals are unbanked globally. CBDCs can bridge this gap and offer financial inclusion to the world's unbanked population. This benefits individuals and opens up untapped markets for digital financial service providers. However, it's important to note that adoption is not guaranteed, as some underbanked individuals may prefer the anonymity that cash provides. Enhanced security is another significant advantage of CBDCs. By deploying a regulated digital currency accessible via mobile devices, payment security can be heightened. Transactions conducted through CBDCs can be finalized and made unalterable, even without a formal bank account. So do you also think CBDCs are much more useful than physical money and cryptocurrency? Join the conversation and let us know in the comments below. Thanks!